Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my happy place. Today is Friday, June 18th, 2021, and this is episode number four in my So Simple Shapes Remix series. So I can't believe we're already into block four and I'm loving this series. I'm loving seeing everything on your social media that you guys are posting on what you're doing with these blocks. You guys are so creative. And that's exactly what I wanted to do with this series. I just wanted you to be able to play with these shapes and, um, you know, just be creative with it. So just as a refresher, here is block one. And I do have all of these tutorials on my channel. So all you have to do is look on my channel. You know, you can just like click on my picture or the name of my channel and then my playlist come up and you can see the Remix Blocks playlist. So you can see all of them if you need any refreshers. So this is one. Again, this is still my original. I really need to put a button on that bird's eye. And here is two. And that's a really fun one. Here is three. And of course, I just did this exactly four weeks ago because I do these on the third Wednesday of every month because you get this pattern there released in the Riley Blake Designs newsletter. And that comes out the third Wednesday of every month. So I film the third Friday of every month, that tutorial. So if you haven't signed up for the newsletter yet, you can go ahead and sign up through the link that I'll be leaving in the description. And so today, this is block four. And so I'm sure you saw my So Simple Shapes series quilt on the wall in the opening of this video. After I explain all of this, I'm gonna clear out the table, pull down the quilt so I can kind of show you block by block. But this is kind of styled after that. All of those blocks are 12 inch size finish. This is a 12 inch size finish. I pieced the background and I'll talk more about that in a minute. And it's just kind of more of a traditional applique block, which I really, really love to do. I love symmetrical things as well. And of course it involves flowers too. I, I don't know if I'll ever do a block that doesn't involve a flower of some kind, just because that's just who I am and how I roll. But anyway, so this is the block that we're going to be doing. This month I've used the Cozy Christmas So Simple Shapes. And let me slide that down. Can you see all mm -hmm. of those? Okay. And I'm gonna try not to ask Cassidy all the time if you can see things. <laughs> I'm just gonna expect her to move things around if she needs to. And then I just used one of Autumn Love because I decided I need, needed a larger circle right here for this yellow. And there wasn't a larger circle in the Cozy Christmas set, so I just grabbed one from Autumn Love. I usually have circles in every set of all different sizes. So those are the sets that I'm using. Now, the shapes that I'm using, let me kind of put this here, grab the shapes, so I can explain which one goes to where. And again, this was from Autumn Love. This is F2, and it is the largest circle in the center of the flower. And then this is from Cozy Christmas. It is B11. And of course, it's the four hearts here. So you'll need four of those. And let's do this biggest one first. This is B20, which in Cozy Christmas shape is actually the Christmas wreath. But look how it can be a flower now. So that's B20. You need one of those. This is B6. And I have used that for the medium circle in red here. So one of those but then it's the same circle that are the denim flowers here. So you need four denim flowers, one, uh, circles, excuse me, and one red. So you need to trace five of these on the interfacing. And then I've used five of the B5. They're the four yellow flower tops, and then this center circle. And um, then the remaining one we have is B10 and it's eight leaves, okay? So that's all of those. Now, if you need to know what size to cut your interfacing and your fabric pieces, remember I showed you this 
last. Let me pull that in so you can see it. So this is the Sew Simple Shapes. I showed you this last time, the cutting guide and the sew-in interfacing guide. And it's just for fabric interfacing so that you know what size to cut your fabric. And each shape is in, in there with the order that the shapes come in. Now, Cozy Christmas is number two. So here's all the shapes here. And so, you know, the I you know I use B11, so you know that for those hearts, you need to cut two and a half by three piece of the sewing interfacing and then of the fabric. And then you go ahead and trace that heart. You just put it on the interfacing and just trace around it with a mechanical pencil, just whatever you need to see. I use a mechanical pencil because it has a nice thin line and that's easy enough for me to see when I'm sewing. If you need something darker, go ahead and use something darker. And so this guide, I'm hoping you are finding it very helpful. Thank you for all of the kind messages um, that I've received that, um, you know, for doing this because it does help keep things organized. And if you know me, I like to stay organized. Now on the last page of this guide, we have the bias tape maker measurements and what I cut it. So for this, for the stems, we're just using the quarter inch bias tape maker. And so it tells you here that for quarter inch, I cut my strips five eighths of an inches wide. So I'm gonna show you again today how I run that through the maker because it's been a few months since I showed you. So I'll show again. So that takes care of that. Um, I do wanna talk about fabric used in here because I always get that question, you know, what fabric are you using? So for the stems, I've been using the same fabric throughout so far. That doesn't mean I'm always going to, but it's just convenient because once I cut them and press them, then I put this, you know, on this spool. So on this side, I have ones that I've cut on the bias. So I know that they're stretchy and these are straight bias. So I just keep them one on the other. And then I know if I'm doing bending, stems, then I use the one I cut on the bias. And if I'm just using straight stems, as in this block today, then I don't need to worry about bias cutting. But what I do when I'm cutting is I just cut the 5 eighths inch strip off the top. You can see right here, this is my piece of fabric. Okay, I'm going to put it up here so you can see the whole thing. So what I did was I just cut that one strip off the top here so that I could demonstrate and show you guys. So this is 5 eighths of an inch wide. Now, if I need on the bias, I just cut 5 eighths of an inch wide from here. Now, how you do the bias is, let's refresh this again. Okay, so this piece is 9 inches tall. So that means I'm going to measure 9 inches in. I'm basically cutting from a nine inches square. So if it's nine inches tall, you don't have to make it into a square. You just have to know how tall your strip is. And then I will measure nine inches in and kind of put a pin there. And that's where I'll make my first cut from here to here. And then I know from, from then I just cut five eighths of an inch wide or however wide I need to for the bias. And so I'll just keep using this strip until it's gone and then I'll probably change colors or something. But that's what my strips look like. If I need way long strips, then I'll just do a taller piece. But, you know, so far cutting stems from that long of a strip, it has been fine. And it will be fine for this block. And so I'll run that through the iron in a minute. I just wanna talk fabric. Okay, so these two are from, um, this is a B background. This is my aqua canning jars. And this is for my B cross stitch, B background fabric both. And um, I chose one in red and this is aqua. And I will show you how I piece that background so that it's, you know, half square triangles like this on an angle and how handy that is and why I like to do that. And as far as fabric goes, let's continue with that. This is from my Prim collection. This is from my B Basics collection. This is from my B Basics as well. Same print for the hearts. I use the same print 
for these. These are from my flea market collection. This is also from my flea market collection. And then this plaid that I used for the leaves is from my prim collection. So that's all the fabrics that I'm using in this block. As you can see, well, I'll bring that back in. As you can see, I've sewn most of the pieces, but I am going to sew at least one of every shape and size and show you how I shape those and things like that so you can see that. I just don't think it's necessary for you to watch me sew and shape all eight leaves, for instance. So I'll just do one of those. And for the backgrounds, I forgot to say for one block, you need an eight inch square, two eight inch squares from each print. So I've got two of those and two of those. Okay, and then I just picked two of them. I don't need to do this on the red ones, but on the blue, what I did was I drew a line a quarter of an inch away from the corner. So here's the corner of the square right here. So you can use like a little half inch skinny ruler if you want, or you can just measure a quarter of an inch away from the corner on each side and draw a line. And then I'll show you more about that when we get to the machine. And so, but that's how you prep those. Again, cut those eight inches square. This is the exact same way that I prepared the backgrounds for all of the blocks in the quilt that you see on the wall. That still remain, you know, that tutorial still remains on my blog and I will link to that. In fact, I'll probably link to the last um, tutorial for this quilt because it's called The Big Finish. But because of that, I have all of the links for all of the blocks within that last tutorial. So it's just kind of like a one stop shopping blog post where you can get all the links in that one. All right, so let's sit, set this aside for a minute and let's talk supplies for a second. These are the pins that I use. They're magnetic, so that's why they're kind of stuck in the bowl there, but these are called my applique pins. This is for when I'm laying out the block, and of course I always use a design board that's big enough for the block. So the pins, the design board, I use Sue Daily Glue, which I love to call Sue Glue. I use long rulers or tape measure to measure. And let's see, I've got, showed you my bias tape already. This is the quarter inch and okay. I think that's enough about supplies. Let's set those aside. I'm gonna pull, pull this cutting mat in first because I wanna show you something on it. And, um, and then I'll, I'll run the bias strip through the maker. But I haven't shown you how I trim up my blocks. So those background squares that I told you about, they are bigger so that when you sew them together, you will need to trim down the block. So this is what it looks like after it's already been appliqued. Okay, but here's my 12 and a half inch trim it ruler. I love these rulers and I develop them so that they have a center line going this way, this way, and diagonal lines. And then this right here represents the quarter inch that will be the seam allowance after you trim it, but after you sew it into the block, within this window, you'll see what that block looks like. And then you know you're not cutting any parts off of your applique and they really help when you're laying out your block. Now, I love doing backgrounds this way quite a bit or pieced backgrounds number one because they add interest to the block but number two it's very easy to lay them out and get them symmetrical when you're doing blocks like this where the design comes out from the center and so what i do to trim up is of course just grab the ruler grab you know the, the rotary cutter whatever's close at hand and i just line up these lines number one on the seam and then it lines up right here on these seams and it just makes it so easy that automatically centers that block see you can see by the little flowers in here all the little flower everything that's blue is the non-slip part of the ruler and so what i do is i just like to do one at a time 
one side at a time because see how this is dimensional so it kind of stacks up so I kind of push my ruler down on one side and you know you can put as much weight on it as you want to to stop it from slipping but this size is a pretty you know heavy ruler so it's not going to slip and then I've got one side there and then I'll just turn let's see if I can turn this mat without um knocking anything off the table but I just think it might be easier for filming there we go can you see the whole thing says mm -hmm. or am I going to have to slide yeah, that's it that's great okay so then I'm just going to do the same thing now normally when I'm not filming I have a little bit more room so so I don't worry about that and of course you can move your block and move your ruler that's not going to matter you already know that you've you know trimmed this side and this side but I just think it's just as easy to turn turn your mat no matter what size it is even if it's a bigger block like this as you can see I kind of pushed on that at the end and you know slipped it off of its markings but that doesn't matter I just know I have this edge to trim these are already trimmed so I simply just lay the ruler exactly on those edges whoops you know because I'm trying to do this on camera and then I just have to line it right up on that seam and there we go all right so now this block measures 12 and a half inches square and once I sew it into the quilt of course it will finish at 12 inches now I do know how I'm gonna finish this block I know this is supposed to be you know your creativity and however you want to finish it but I just kind of wanted to talk about my beginning quilt um, on the wall because a lot of people, since I showed it in block one, have you know asked me questions. So I kind of wanted to bring that up again. So I thought it would be a great idea to design another block that's different from the blocks that I put into this quilt, but yet you know would fit into there. But I do have an idea of how I'm going to finish this one, and so I'll show you that at the end of the video. So I will put this back on the design board and that's nice and trimmed up so that I can sew my little borders on there for my project. So just want to set that over there. And okay, now I'm gonna slide my ironing board in here so I can show you how. I'm just gonna put it right on top of there, okay. Now, I think that's in the screen enough with my water, my pins, all of that stuff. Background pieces. All right, so again, this is the exact way I do it for all of my, my strips. Now, I call them in my sew along guides for my quilts, I call for either straight bias or on the bias. So when I tell you a strip to cut in the quilt, it will either say in parentheses on the bias or it will say straight bias. And so I explained earlier, straight bias means you just cut it along the width of the fabric. And if I say on the bias, that means it needs to be curved or bent. And so you're gonna cut it on the diagonal here. But either way that you cut it, it's run through the maker the exact same way. Let me grab my see I've got a spray bottle here okay whoops okay so the first thing I do is I do spray this okay now in this bottle right here I have half water and half Mary Ellen's starch best press starch I think this one's in the, the um, non-scented but you can get all kinds of fun scents and so I do use that for starch and that kind of helps hold the shape a little bit i don't like it real heavy thick starch i don't like my fabric to be real um you know real thick when i'm trying to do applique because of turning and shaping and things like that okay so once i get this wet i take my iron and i just press the end so that this point i keep that as a point because that's going to help go through that first and I like to keep that as a point and I like it to be dry because if I keep that wet, it's gonna to be too flimsy to run through there. So I just push that through 
and you can see in the top that you can kind of guide it if you can't get it through all the way. I'll just grab some scissors, let me grab a pin until I can reach that point. There we go. Okay, so since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna turn it this way. And what I do is I just pull that through and I try to make this even. See how this is coming even from the top? And the instructions on this uh, box say to do it like this so that you can see your folds at the top and you can hold on to this and pull it out as you iron. I do it completely opposite. I have found, I mean, obviously, if you like to do it that way, you can. But for me personally, I have found that if I pull it through with my folds underneath and my smooth side at the top, I can iron out that crease. So that's what I start doing. And I just follow along with the iron. And then I take this hand right here and kind of use it as my other tool, keeping the fabric straight. And I go slow because I want to saturate this strip with heat from the iron. And of course I don't use steam once I've, I've already got it wet and I don't want to get it wet again and get that starch out. And I like vintage irons because they don't have, I only use the ones that don't have the steam holes in the back. I only use vintage irons. I've told you why in my other episodes, but I like to control what moisture and you know, water and things goes onto my fabric. So that's why I always use a dry iron. Now, as I'm running this through, I do not touch the tip to this metal because I'm holding this. And then I've done that before, like watching TV and absentmindedly. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that thing's so hot, I can't touch it. And then I just run it till it gets all the way through. Make sure that I leave the iron on there long enough to have saturated it. And then I just leave it here, usually to cool off. Now at this point, you could grab some clappers and put on it to help it cool faster. But that's what I do. I try not to do anything. Now for straight, I do it straight. When I'm doing it on the bias, I will go ahead and as I'm pulling it through, I'll kind of iron it on a curve. And that kind of helps with the curve. Once that's cool, I'll go ahead and you know, wrap it around here and then I have it all ready for use. And so I've just cut these stems. I'll tell you the length that I've cut them and things in layout, but I've cut these stems according to the length that I need to. Let's see, I have, I've got my notes over at the sewing machine. So I'll tell you then during layout what size to cut those stems. All right, so I'm gonna clear this counter off so that I can pull the quilt off the wall and pull it under the camera and kind of talk about a few of the blocks and just show you close up, you know, each block and, uh, you know, just chat about it a little bit. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, here we are with the quilt off the wall and onto the table. So I'm gonna to try to show you these a little bit close up. Um, I, I did this starting in um, June, 2018. It's still on my blog if you wanted to do this, but I did different B backgrounds in all of the blocks, but I still did the same way that I just showed you by cutting eight inch squares and then, you know, piecing them in the back. Well, I showed you the fabric. I haven't shown you how to sew it yet, but I will. Um, I've just had a lot of you ask to see this on my YouTube channel and talk to you about it a little bit more instead of just showing a picture of it and saying, yeah, that's the quilt that was on my blog. <laughs> so here we go. I know this one was from Autumn Love because I recognized this shape as we used it for the scarecrow hat, but I turned it upside down and it's become flower pots. So I used all of my shapes up until the point of Autumn Love because that was the my most current set of So Simple Shapes. So when I made this quilt, it's using every set that I have up until Autumn Love. Hang on just a minute, let me see this. Let's see. Okay, so Autumn Love is F. So that means this uses six, my first six sets. And because obviously I, you know, put them in alphabetical order. So this one's made out of Autumn Love. And let me just start sliding this down a little bit. This one I know was made for my fruit salad. 
because of the pear shapes and the hearts. This one looks pretty similar to what this, this month's block is. I know that this is Cozy Christmas because, you know, of this flower and because of the hearts. The leaves are the same. I only have one leaf shape, I think, in Cozy Christmas. But I added the smaller circle here, and then I added a stack of circles here. I think it's really fun to stack circles in these applique quilts. I love the texture that applique. I don't want these to lay flat. And so, you know, piecing is supposed to lay flat, but applique should have a little bit of texture to it. I love how you can see that it's kind of raised up from the surface. Now, of course, that's really accentuated when you quilt behind the appliques. Now, I've done both ways. I've done, you know, an overall pattern. And when I say me, I mean Julie, because Julie Stubbs is uh, one of my really good friends. She's in my peep group, so she's one of my peeps, but she quilts my quilts um, for me for my So Simple Shapes. And so I just, you know, ask her, and we talk about it and ask her, can you do this? Can you do that? And she's just you know, lovely. She just does it for me without, um, you know, worrying about what it's going to look like because she knows it's my quilt. And so that's my advice to you. You should ask your quilter to quilt it the way you want it quilted. If you don't really know, then that's okay. If you trust your quilter, tell her, go ahead and do it. But the one thing that I do know is when I want my appliques to pop like this, especially in a traditional quilt, I will ask Julie to densely quilt behind the appliques and not on the appliques, and then they will automatically pop up. Now, when there's a larger piece like this, I don't want it so popped up that in the middle it rounds like this, so I did ask her to quilt around this circle right here. So that's quilted down. And, you know, for larger pieces like that in the center, then, you know, we'll pick one thing. So for this quilt, I did all of the same stems. This was for my Cozy Christmas collection, the gingham. And then one thing I did was I used Riley Green confetti cotton. And I, for all of the leaves throughout every block, let me move this one down so you can look at another. You've looked at that one long enough, right? This one's also for my autumn love because of the sunflower shapes. But in every block I used a solid of Riley green somewhere and I took my green Ara floss and I used um, two or three strands is what I usually do. I know it says it on my blog but off the top of my head I'm thinking it's three strands but it may only be two and I just did this little you know running stitch all the way around the outside before I applique the piece down before I even glue basted it or anything. I did that little running stitch and it just kind of added a little detail. You don't have to do that. I just, you know, just wanted to show you that sometimes it's just the little things that you change up sometimes that make each quilt unique. Now I did pick the same fabric. Let's fold it this way so I can, okay, how am I gonna do that? All right, I did pick the same fabric that's kind of bowed underneath here. Let's, I don't want to hit the camera. Okay, maybe that's a little bit flatter. Is that better, sis? Okay, yep, let's unfold that. You know, trying to fold a quilt into a little piece on a table is a little bit hard. Okay, so this one, see, I, I used an oval in the set and then cut it in half after sewing and that split and became the leaf. So it's really fun to be creative with the shapes and look at it in maybe a different way. Um, so that's one of the things I did the same to make each block kind of go together is the same stems and one piece somewhere for the leaves or somewhere in each block be the Riley Green solid. And then all the B backgrounds are different. I use scrappy sashings. These are cut two and a half inches by uh, 12 and a half inches. But then I went ahead and did the same fabric, which this is one of my B basics as well. These are all of my fabrics collections, just most of them B basics and then just pull different colors. And then I went ahead and used one of my ginghams. And I believe this is in my 
polka dot stitch it. No, this is in my um, my Bake Sale 2 collection. Gingham for the border, and then I bound it in red, and then I used my wide back, my green baby chicks for the back. But I love, I love the texture of this quilt, meaning not only the actual texture because of the appliques, but um, because of all the different B backgrounds and the colors and you know the texture of each print. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of slide this down so you can see each block. Again, this one, I used four hearts from another set. It's kind of similar, but there's a lot more leaves. Okay, now I'm gonna fold it this way. So hold please while I kind of try to make it so that you can see these blocks as I roll them down. Okay, I hope this is in full picture. So here's another block. And so there's, if I remember right, there's 20 blocks. Let's see there. Yeah, there's four across and five down. So I did 20 different 12 inch finished blocks. So there's that one with the fun little circles. This one I remember is from my um, fruit salad set because of the cherries and those hearts. Then I've got this one right there. I think that's really fun with the gingham in the middle. That one right there, I know this one's from Autumn Love. I recognize that because this that I used for the tulip shape right here was the corn husks for the corn on the cob and this shape under here was for the corn on the cob, but I just cut it in half so that I could push it down more. Okay, so that's half of the blocks. Now let me turn it this way. I'll show you the other half. Let's get this straight. Okay, so here's another one from Fruit Salad because of the strawberries. Okay, I'm having a rough time pulling this over. There we go. There's another simple but fun. As you can see, some of these blocks are simpler than others, and I think that's what makes an applique quilt fun. This one is more elaborate, meaning more pieces to it than this one. Hope I'm not sliding this too fast so you get like um, motion sickness. But see how simple this one is and then back to that one, how simple that is. And so when I'm laying them out and deciding, you know, where to put them in the quilt, I'll kind of separate the simple ones and put a little bit more, you know, elaborate one there in the center. Okay, I'm gonna turn this whole quilt around so I can show you the last row of blocks. Okay, starting with that one. This one was fun because I put a yellow gingham circle behind this flower, and that's also a fun idea to do. And then I just simply added a small circle onto stems. I, I could have left these stems off or, and just put these circles here as an accent, but I thought it was kind of fun. Here's another one that I've used with stars. I used stars and hearts and flowers and lots of gingham and polka dots in this quilt. This is another one from my fruit salad because of the apples. And we've got this one that is kind of the same ideas. I just showed you where I did my light yellow gingham. This was from So Cherry too, and I put it behind this large flower, and that was really fun. And, so, and these circles I just made almost like a low volume print in there. So they're, so they're there and they add texture, but they don't pop out at you. And that was, that was fun. Okay, so I think I've shown you all of these blocks and chatted about it, talked about the quilting and everything. Again, I'll leave the link and this use a, uses A through F 
of my sets of so simple shapes and now let's go over to the sewing machine and i will show you how to sew this month's block okay here we are to the sewing machine and i'm sewing with miss doris today and here's the block that we're going to make and let's talk background first so this is what the background block looks like before i've laid out the applique okay and i've pressed all of the seams open and again it's bigger i started out with eight inches squares um two of each print eight inch squares makes this whole block and what i do is let me grab these off of here again the two ones with the red cross stitches on i didn't mark but this back one i just mark exactly from the corner one quarter inch from each side okay so i'm just going to sew one so I can show you how I do it. So I just put right sides together. You can pin if you'd like, but you know me, I just don't pin very often unless I, I'm really afraid that a seam's not gonna meet up. But, and because these are gonna be trimmed down, they don't have to be exact. So I'm just gonna sew right on the line. And then I'm using my little scraps of fabric for starters and stoppers today. And then I just turn around. Normally I'm doing, you know, more of these. So I would just chain piece. But since I'm doing one, just turn it around. Basically just sewing right on those lines, you know, let my machine do the work. Thanks, Miss Doris. And then I just grab some scissors. You can do this obviously with a rotary cutter, but it's just as easy to grab scissors. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I just cut between those two stitched lines. Okay, now I've got these two and they're half square triangles. So then I simply bring them over here to the machine, I mean, to the ironing board. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm just pressing these seams open. I do also like to use my, my seam roller here a lot when I'm pressing seams open. I usually do that on a hard surface and I'll do it first before I press, but this is a very helpful tool. Once I've done that, I'll just put the clapper on there so it will cool down. But I know um, a lot of you are so sweet and you are really worried that I'm gonna, you know, set my curtains on fire with this iron. But really, I mean, Cassidy's standing right here, I'm sitting right here, and the iron is not as close as you may think. So it looks a lot closer when we're filming, but... Um, it's the angle of the camera. It's it's not that close. Yeah, it's really far away. But also, when I'm sewing at my machine for longer periods of time, or in other words, when I'm not filming, I do tie my curtains back. And so I don't even have to worry about that. But I know during filming, it does a weird glare from the window. And so I keep my curtains closed during filming. So just to let you know, I promise I'm not going to burn down my studio. My iron's totally safe. And thanks for, thanks for worrying about me, but it's all good. All right, so once these are cooled, pressed, then I simply lay them out in a pinwheel. So you can see the pinwheel in the red and the pinwheel in the blue. Just use a quarter inch seam. And again, I just press open. And that's really gonna help us when we're laying out the block, remember how normally when we use one fabric, I have you press it in half and then in half and then this way and this way. 
you don't have to do that. You can just, um, when we go to layout, we've got these guidelines and it's really gonna be fun. Okay, so let me throw all of these pieces back on there and we're gonna get to the shapes. So again, I've already sewn all of these shapes in prep, but I forgot there's only one flower, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew a flower as well. Now, let's talk about sewing because I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit so that you can't hear me. I do um, use a regular stitch length normally, but if you're worried that your stitches are too long, you can always make them smaller. I would not make them larger because that's really gonna gather it up. You don't want it, you know, so very tight that it's just gonna um, kind of gather up the fabric and interfacing, you know, how sometimes when you do too tight of stitches. But I would definitely use a smaller stitch if you feel like it's gonna be more secure on your points and things like that. And so all I do is simply trace again with the pencil or something that you can see on the top and so that is up and your fabric is right side up and I simply just lay it on there and I start stitching in and I stitch around right on the line and then I sew past where I began stitching by about a half inch or so and that sets my seam so I don't have to back stitch or anything and then instead of T pulling it out and cutting my threads and wasting all that thread and time, I just sew right off of this and we'll be feeding the next one right in. Now, some of you, again, have been asking me about circles and sewing on them. I literally just go as slow as I need to. It always looks fast here because I'm speeding it up for you because it's kind of boring <laughs> just to watch one little stitch at a time, just me and Miss Doris, but, um, I do slow it down on the circles and I do kind of, I've got to the point where I just use one hand because it's easier for me to see my line just pivoting. But you don't have to just use one hand. I've had people ask me that, like, is there a trick that you're using one hand? Is that easier for me? For some reason, it just is sometimes. Um, and I just keep feeding them through. I go as slow as I need to. This one's going to take me longer because it's got, you know, those curves that I need to go in, but you wanna make sure that you sew right into those intersections and not away from them. Try to sew on the line as much as you can. So that's why it's important that you're able to see the line. And I, I do have my Seam Sew Easy Guide on here just because I keep it on here, but I don't, it's not necessary for this part of the sewing. Um, you know, I just use it for quarter inch seams and um, easy corner triangles, which I'm not doing either of right now, but I'm just, I'm not gonna take the time to take it off because it's just as easy on there. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just sew all of these right on the line and feed them through one at a time. Okay, ready, set, sew. So here we are with all of these sewn right on the line. I need to clip these apart right here. And um, one thing that I've mentioned several times before on my other videos, but um, that I forgot to mention is that sometimes if you stray off the line just a little bit, can you see that? I couldn't see very well because I couldn't lean in because I was afraid my head would cover up the camera. But I just kept it going as smooth as I possibly could. But I'm looking at that now going, you know what, I really should re-sew that. So before I start to trim, it's really easy that if you're off, but it's on the outside, it, that's not gonna matter because you can just go ahead and re-sew those shapes. So you may want to check your shapes right before you start to trim them. This time I'll lean in a little bit more and hopefully my I won't block your 
you. I think the shape would have turned out okay, but because they're four matching ones, I just wanted to make sure it was the same size circle because that would bother me. So that's what I do there. And then um, I'll just go ahead and sew on this again. And then one more thing that I thought about when I was sewing that I didn't mention in this video, but I have several times before, is I like to use a foot. Um, this is the foot that comes with the featherweight. I call them, I've always called them open toe. I don't know what they're called, but whatever kind of foot that you have that you can actually see where your needle goes into the fabric so that it's not hidden from the foot. Whatever that is on your machine, I highly recommend that because it's really important. You don't wanna just guess where your line is. So, all right, so now what I do with these pieces is I just simply grab my scissors and I trim around them and I always say an approximate quarter inch but I usually do it you know smaller way smaller than quarter inch but that's bigger than an eighth of an inch too so in between those two and I just go ahead and trim these All right, so now I'm all trimmed. And now the next step is always I separate the pieces that need to be clipped before I turn them. Circles never have to be clipped, they're outer curves. These are the two pieces in this block that need to be clipped. Both of these pieces have cleavage areas. This is what a cleavage area is when it goes down in like that. It only needs one clip. So I just take my little scissors, and I like to use little scissors for this because big ones, you can't really see, you know, where the blades are gonna end. And I just do one clip, you see that, to the thread, all the way to the thread, but not past it. Now, another thing, when you clip this, if you happen to, whoops, I clipped through the thread, no problem, before you turn it, just run it through your machine a few times and strengthen that before you turn it, and that won't be a problem. So one clip, now that will lie flat. And then same thing for this, just one into each little, little cleavage, there we go. Okay, so the next thing I do is I put my little X in the interfacing, not the fabric. Of course, I want to keep the fabric away from that, so I'll pull them apart which is pretty easy on these, you know, pieces that are as big as this. And so I'll just go ahead and do a little cut first on all of them. That's what I do with the big pieces, sometimes small pieces as well. Let me push her out of the way for a minute. Or my other option is a seam ripper. I'll just put the tip of it in there, make sure by feeling it that it's not there, and I'll just start, you know, just kind of a little, um, area so that I can get the tip of my scissors in there. And that one went all the way through the fabric. So I pulled it back out there because I don't want to go through all this and then poke a hole with my seam ripper. So however you feel the safest to do, you can do it on a surface as well to get it started, but you still have to pick it up and fill on the other side. So I usually just do it in my hand. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna then just cut an X and I'm gonna show you how to shape one circle. I'll show you how to shape this one that I re-sewed, but all the circles are the same, obviously. So I'm gonna shape a leaf. We'll talk about that. So you can see how I shape. All circles are gonna be the same, so I'm not gonna worry about that. The heart, with the heart, I, I kind of do it like a little slanted X. Oops. And these don't have to be real big. They just have to be big enough to turn. 
and then I'll shape this flower. So what I do is, okay, let me roll, roll this truck out of the way. What I do is I just go ahead and turn it, pushing it out with my fingers. Now, obviously these larger pieces are easiest. And then I just kind of shape it as much as I can with my fingers pushing out gently. I know it's hard to see on the camera how, you know, how gentle I'm actually being, but I am, I'm not really pushing real hard. I'm just kind of letting it do its thing and just guiding it. Now, that's, you can get it looking, you know, pretty good like that when they're bigger shapes, but you can see there's flat parts and things like that. I would like it to, you know, shape out exactly where I sewed it. So this is where this little handy dandy tool, and you know, we're only as good as our tools. And this is a great tool. I've loved this from day one. This is the Clover point to point turner. I love how it feels in my hand. And I always turn it this way with the interfacing towards me and I'm not pushing on the interfacing. I'm behind that interfacing seam and I'm just pushing on the cotton fabric. And I'm just kind of smoothing and pushing at the same time. And that's what's going to give it a nice curve. Now this is why I don't like to have um, real heavily starched fabric when I'm doing applique for piecing. You know, that would work great. But for this, I don't really like to, to do that because I want my cotton to have give to it. And once you put a lot of starch into your cotton, that's the point of it is, you know, making that give uh, go away out of your cotton so that it won't stretch and things like that. But I actually want this to have a little bit of give. And so when I go like this, let me see if I can, that's kind of what it looks like on the edge. See, as I'm going along and that cotton has a memory. So once I do that, then a lot of times I'll just take my shoe, you know, my thumb and my finger and push on it. And that's basically going to stay exactly how I shaped it out. So I hope that helps. And I do like to push it out enough barely so I can see that thread, um, you know, from the seam that I sewed or, you know, Miss Doris sewed, let's say. When I say me, I really mean Miss Doris, right? Now that one looks a little bit flat to me. So before I take it over to the iron or use the seam roller, I'm just gonna kind of push that out. Now, I know a lot of you get a little bit nervous about this part and pressing them out, but I'm here to kind of hopefully make your fears go away. Now remember, if you shape it out the best that you can, you can only shape it out so much, right? And um, remember that once you roll it and then press it, let's see, I left my roller over here. Okay, so I just go ahead and I like to kind of set the seams before I apply that heat and make it flat. Remember that when you put it on here and hand applique or machine applique, you can really cover a lot of mistakes that you think are maybe not so smooth by just manipulating with needle and thread, you know, by hand applique. You can like push that point in and do your hand applique so it's smoother. And the same with machine. Um, you know, your little zigzag or your buttonhole stitch or whatever you want to use around the edges are going to cover up those imperfections. So remember, this is just one step. Do the best you can and don't worry, you know, if you think it's not going to be perfect. That's, you know, it's, it's all going to be perfect because it's your block and you had fun doing it. If you're not having fun doing it, then, you know, what's the point? So don't worry too much about perfection because there really is no such thing. You just want to make a cute little flower shape out of some interfacing and some fabric. That's all you're trying to do. Okay, so there's the flower, the heart. I kind of do the same way. I'll just push out those basic pieces and then we'll get this as close to the heart shape as we can. And then remember, we're going to have fun and say, look at that cute little heart and not worry that it's, you're doing something wrong or your quilt's not going to look good or, you know, something like that. That's just, that's no, that's no fun. Just, um, 
you know, visit with your friends while you sew and, and uh, or, you know, listen to a book or watch TV or music and just relax and have fun with it. I forgot to roll that, but, you know, there we've got the heart. Now this leaf shape is very, if there's, they're not very pointy, so you don't have to worry about, you know, pushing out points or anything like that. And so I'm just very gentle with that. Now, when you are doing curves, you, you do want to be extra gentle because that is on the bias. And so your threads are on the bias. And so it's easy to poke those out. So most of the time when I've made a mistake and poked something, you know, poked, poked this out through the seam, it's usually on a curve, not on a point as you may think. So I'm more careful on points, but sometimes on curves, you know, you're just kind of going along. Oh. Forgot to roll again, sorry sis. Made you take the camera the wrong direction. And again, I do use my um, clappers too at this point. Okay, circle. Now hopefully we won't poke out of this because look, I've, I've sewn over that twice just to get it the right size. And you know, I've never really done that on purpose before, but now that I'm thinking about it, if you're worried about your circles, and they're poking out and you feel like your fabric isn't stable. I mean, this is this is good quality fabric, but if you happen to be using something that you feel is too thin or I don't know, something like that, maybe you could just sew around the seam twice. I've never done that before, but it's gonna take twice as long and twice as much thread, but that means it's going to be twice as strong as well. So you could try that if you're doing something very you know, intricate or very curvy that you're worried about. Now see, I think that shaped out pretty good and again okay okay so I have those there to cool but I did want to show you when I was sewing these yesterday in prep I believe it was this one and I didn't fix it yet because I wanted to show you and I know I've said this before but remember the part where I said if you poke something out see how I had poked that came out and so what I do is instead of re-sewing this whole thing, I know that I'm going to be putting thread around the edges and appliquing, again, either by machine or by hand. I take the sew glue, put it on here a little bit, and just fold it, fold those pieces back. And that's still nice and secure, meaning it's not going to fray anymore. I, you know, obviously didn't apply the glue, but that will stick there. And then that's not a problem. So there are, you know, there are ways to fix things. And I guess um, during this tutorial, I just kind of, my point I wanna make is just to have fun with it. Don't worry about this is applique. You're just shaping these shapes. Again, just try to take a deep breath if you're worried about it and just say, I'm just trying to make a shape with a piece of fabric and a piece of interfacing and it's all gonna work out great. All right, so we're gonna go over there. Um, to, back to the work table and set this up. But I did want to show you, I told you I'd show you later, so maybe I'll hurry and sew this up um, and show you what I'm going to do with this block. So I've got this all trimmed up. This is the one that was previously done. And I cut, so this is 12 inches. And so I cut these three and a half inch squares to go in the corners. So I cut four three and a half inch squares and then I cut four little outer borders. I went through my uh, red bins and thought this is for my farm girl vintage collection and it had all the colors in it and so I thought that would be great. So these are three and a half by twelve and a half because the block is twelve and a half right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this together that will finish at 18 inches. Let me put that up there. And I'm gonna make this into another pillow. I know I'm always making pillows for my patio, but that's why I used these colors in this pattern because it's summertime and this looks like a summertime pillow to me. So I'm gonna hurry and sew these together real quick before we set up the block and I'll meet you back over there. All right, so look here. I sewed the borders on this for my pillow. Now this finishes at 18 inches, and I am in love with this. I think this is so cute. 
It looks very summer. I love the colors that I chose. And obviously, you know, these are some of my favorite colors because I use them all the time. But I'm even thinking, and I always say this, but look how cute this would be for a quilt just doing the same block over and over again. You could do four of these blocks and use these for the sashings and the cornerstones. And I'll probably bind the pillow and something in one of my denim colors. That'd be really fun. That'd be fun for the quilt. If you did it four blocks and did it, that would be square and it would be the cutest table topper. Or you could do like three blocks across and do this, do the sashings and stuff and make it a fun table runner. It's just a fun, very versatile block um, to finish in traditional ways. So I'm glad I took the time to sew that together real quick and so that I could show you what that looks like. All right. Now let's talk about this whole thing. Okay, Cass, I'll just have you move it into the screen if it's yep. not right. Looks good. And so now here we've got the stems all ready to go and cut. So I have four three and a half inch long stems and I have four two inch long stems. All right, and I've got my background here. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is center my flower. Now there's two ways that you can do this. You could put the curve on the lines or you could do the cleavage on the lines, which is how what I'm going to do. Now this is what I'm talking about, loving these backgrounds, meaning I just line up on the inside right there, and that literally is all I have to do. I'm gonna pull my pins over here, and I'll probably just stick, you know, three or four pins in. I don't want them all the way to the edge so that I can glue, but I do want to have room for my circles. Now, the one thing I didn't prep yet for you, I just thought I'd show you, instead of taking shortcuts, how I do this whole block when I lay out. So I want to center that. This one's not too hard to center because it's so close to the same size that that's pretty easy to eyeball. But I always have my little handy dandy short ruler here and it is should measure quarter of an inch all the way around, okay? And then you can see how much of this Sioux glue that I put on here, I just dot all the way around that circle. Now I'm gonna center this here. And this should measure a quarter inch all the way around as well, these three circles. That's how they kind of nest. And then if I do it that way, then I can turn it over, go ahead and put glue this glue is coming out kind of fast today. So those are bigger dots that I normally use, but that's okay, it's not a big deal. And then I will place these in the middle and this is where I want to measure. So what I'm gonna do is, that's one inch from here to here, and I'm gonna measure one inch over here to make sure that that's what it needs to be, and it does, it just needs to. And so, that's what I do. Now I know it needs to come this way. And Cash, you can probably tell from the top of the camera if it's... Yeah, it's pretty good. It looks like it still needs to come down just a little bit. Now, again, if you... Um, and that means it's gonna be one inch, you know, to every cleavage area away. If you get to this point and you pin this down, I'm gonna go ahead and move these pins into the circle because the circle has, all the circles have glue on them. And now that leaves that loose so that it's not going anywhere. But now I can put the stems under there. But what I was gonna say is if you see that this is off a little bit, again, I love this glue because it is repositionable, meaning you can gently just pull it off and recenter it and re-glue it again. It's not gonna hurt the fabric, it just, you know, just pull it off a little at a time and it comes off very easily and doesn't tear anything. So that's that's the first step I do is get the center going on these blocks. Now these longer stems are the ones that go in the corner. So what I do there is I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue it all down the center of this line and just tucked under by a quarter of an inch. And how I do that is I set it to the side so I know how long of glue that I need to use and I'll just start under here. And this, I really try to do a very thin line. And I just stop right there. And then I move it over. And I know this stem is exactly where it needs to go because it's 
right down the center of that seam. You can unfold that so you can see it's down the center. And then I'm just gonna move around and do the same thing real quick. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with these. So I think I'll have Cass speed up the camera here, but I'm just gonna be doing the same thing all the way around. All right, so now I've got all those glued down and I'm gonna go ahead and lift these up because I don't need to tuck anything else underneath the flower. And I'm just going to go around and put a few dots there. And again, I, I don't need too much glue. I try not to do it too excessively. And then once I've glued that, then I'm gonna move the pins out so that they will glue into place. I usually like to put like a pin in each petal or each intersection or something just so that it stays down. And, you know, so that the glue and this fabric and the interfacing all meet together. Okay, so now I'm gonna let those be where they are and um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I can either do all four hearts or the flowers. So I'll probably just grab the hearts. And what I'm gonna do is I take this and measure how long it's going to be from this concave cleavage part to this cleavage part. Okay, so let me, I already figured this out. So I'm just gonna glue it. I mean, I'm gonna measure this so that looks like it is two and three quarters. So I'm gonna put my ruler here and move this down. I almost had it just right to two and three quarters and the point of the hearts there. So from here to here is two and three quarters. And if I put this on this seam and this point down the center of that stem, there's just no way it can you know, be in the wrong place. So for right now, I'm just gonna put three pins in there and go ahead and do the same thing. So I'm just gonna set that there. Wait, did I say two and three quarters? Yes. Okay. I'm like, what if I do this wrong now? Okay, two and three quarters. And if you wanted to, you could always just measure from here to here, but sometimes your hearts, you know, maybe be shaped a little bit different. So I like to measure the whole length. So that's why I'm going with the two and three quarters inch measurement. Okay. Three pins. I hope it's okay with all y'all that I just, um, I'm showing you this whole block instead of doing it, you know, really quickly. I just, do shortcuts sometimes and, but this one, because it's symmetrical, meaning I wanted to show you how I do all of that when they're symmetrical. But, you know, most of the time I'll do shortcuts because it's really repetitive and we all like shortcuts, but I just felt like I needed to be a little bit more detailed with this block. So I hope that's okay. It's always better to have too much instruction, I guess, than not enough, right? So I know this is going to be a long video, so I hope you're not getting too tired of the sound of my voice, but okay. So there's the hearts. They're all ready to glue. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the flowers. So I'm going to take that and I know that from the end here and to, I'm not going to do to the tip of here. I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to do from here to the bottom of the flower. And so that's exactly two and a half inches from here to here. Okay, so that's gonna be easy. I'm just gonna lay my ruler right there. Bring that, set that on the two and a half. Now this one, you kind of have to eyeball going. I'm just, I've just moved over and stood this way so that I know that I have my circle evenly on both halves. I hope that made perfect sense. <laughs> 
and so I like to use, you know, you can obviously use any ruler, but I do like to use, you know, this seems to be my handy dandy one. Sometimes I use my square ones, but I like to use small ones so that you can get into these places in between the pins and things that you already have. So these I'm just gonna stick a couple of pins in to hold them in place. Two and a half from there. Eyeball it so it's halfway. I'm really trying to take my time so that I get this correct and I'm not um, trying to rush through it too much. And then also you can see the stem, how much tucks under there. I like to have a longer stem than necessary because there's nothing worse than a shorter stem because you can always trim it down, but I think that's just gonna tuck under there fine. I don't need to trim it down. You can always trim it down, but it's pretty hard to add on to a stem, so. Okay, so there, those are ready. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do these smaller yellow circles. And what I'm gonna measure there is from the bottom of this to the top of this yellow circle is two and a quarter. So I know that this circle is gonna stick up a quarter because this is a two inch circle. This finishes at two inches. So I'm just gonna grab this, remove this pin. Maybe I should have put them on the side. That would have been smarter, see? Okay, if I put the pins on the sides, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna kind of put that up to what I think is about a quarter of an inch, lay that down, and yeah, that's exactly two and a quarter. Make sure it's centered, and then just stick a pin in there. Go ahead and do the same thing all the way around. This is that one that I needed to fix. So I didn't do that yet. So here I go to that point. So I'm just putting a little glue on there, folding it over, kind of rolling it. And letting it dry onto that interfacing. And there I go. Okay, same thing there. So ask me how I know how to do all these fixes, right? Because again, there's no such thing as perfect. Sometimes we make mistakes, if we even wanna call them mistakes. I don't know if they're really mistakes or if it's just the process, you know, of making things. It's just how it is. Now I'm gonna tuck this under where I fixed it and stick a pin there so that it dries nice and under. And I'm gonna continue on. Okay, remember to put your pins on the sides of your circles and not on the ends like I did because that's gonna save time. Okay, that's gotta come down a little bit. Okay, one more to go and then we can add our leaves. And the, the leaves are always the easiest, I think. Okay, it's a little bit hard for me to see on this angle, so there we go. Hope you didn't get the top of my head in there. <laughs> Trying to reach over. All right, now those are all ready to glue down, and now with the leaves, you kind of just basically, you can eyeball this because it's such a, a tight little space in there, meaning, what I kind of like to do is pick a point. I, I kind of like this to be about a quarter of an inch right here and about a quarter of an inch there. And then I'll just stick two pins in it. And so I'll bring this down to where this curve is about a quarter of an inch and about a quarter of an inch there. So it's basically about the same distance. Now, if you wanted to, you could say, okay, I want my leaves up higher you know, closer to my flowers, like this. And you can totally do that. But I kind of like how they look down tucked in and let that wide part of that heart, you know, kind of shine a little bit. And so it's not, doesn't seem so crowded. And, you know, that's just my eye. 
But remember, you're the boss of your own quilt. You're the boss of your own applique block. So you can basically lay out your block as long as you want. I mean, however you want, as long as it doesn't go past 12 inches square. Now, I don't use the tape measure as much, you know, for this. I better put my lid on my glue. I don't use the tape measure as much for this, but I, when I'm doing symmetrical like this, because I'm doing the measurements coming out, but, um, you know, I'll measure it at the end just to make sure, and you can bet I'll put my 12 and a half inch ruler on there just to make sure that I didn't miss something, especially, you know, get distracted when I'm talking to you or something like that, or, you know, somebody came to the door or, oh, I've got an extra leaf. Okay, so again, I'm all ready to glue, but before I glue, I'll put this down center. I realize I've got my pins there, but I can still see that that's not going to be past 12 and a half. And I do know that from the top of this heart to the top of that heart is 11 inches. And so from the top of that heart to the top of that heart is 11 inches as well. And so then you can just check your measurements this way. This looks like it's for almost 14 and a half. And this is the same thing. It's a, it looks like it's a little bit shorter on this one. So, you know, you can kind of tip it and look and say, okay, maybe it's this yellow square that I didn't, I mean, circle, that I didn't bring out quite enough. Okay. And then all I do is I just glue them all down, lift them up, leave my pins in. And again, I either hand applique or machine applique. Um, I will link to that tutorial where I show you how I do either one. And um, there's the block set up. There's the pillow again. And uh, let's see, I will be back next week with, um, it's my turn to do my tutorial in the Riley Blake block challenge. And so that will also be part of my Sew Your Stash series. So I'll be back for another episode next Friday in my Sew Your Stash series. And then in July, I've got a lot of things that I've been meaning to film that just haven't had time to film in July. I've got that on the schedule. One of them is I'm gonna do floss tube. I'm gonna do my episode on all of my featherweights. I'm gonna bring out all my featherweights and put them here on the counter and just show you what they look like and you know talk to, to you about featherweights and why I love them a little bit, but mainly it's going to be a show and tell on my featherweights and things that I do. I'm also going to pull out my chunky thread and do another crochet tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make a little flower for the top of your sewing machine under your spool for um, out of my chunky thread. And of course, I'll be doing number five in the remix block. I'll have a whole other block design for you. And so hope you um, stay tuned to my channel and I so appreciate you you know tuning in and watching me and sewing with me I really do honestly feel like you're just here in my sewing room chatting away with me as we're sewing and having a great time so thanks again and I'll chat with you later